Shalom from Israel to all of the Daystar viewers around the world. I'm Moshe Bartzvi, the producer and founder of Israel Now News. We at Israel Now News are dedicated to bringing you the full story and the truth about Israel from Israel. It's written in the Holy Bible when David said in Psalm 25:5, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. And God says in Zechariah 8:16, These are the things that you shall do. Speak out the truth to one another. Judge with truth and judgment to peace in your gates. And always search for the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John 8:31. I hope you enjoyed the program. God bless you from Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Erin Viner. In our top story, Palestinian groups have declared the start of the Third Intifada. Several Palestinian websites have posted a video which shows dozens of masked Palestinians rallying in support of the establishment of a new terrorist organization. The Brigades of National Unity in Hebron is a militant terrorist group which says its goal is to start a Third Intifada, or armed uprising, against Israel. The video shows the group's leader explaining that the newly formed terrorist group consists of members of Fatah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Their proclaimed goal is to fight Israel with an iron fist and with full force, and to conquer all of Israel from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. He said that the group is planning to launch this intifada from the heart of Hebron so that it could extend to all of Israel. Jews in Denmark are being warned against wearing any religious clothing or symbols out of fear of anti-Semitic attacks in Copenhagen. The Israeli ambassador to Denmark told the AFP news agency that Jewish community members and visitors are being advised to put on their skull caps only after entering synagogues and against wearing them in public. They're also being warned to not speak Hebrew loudly or to wear the Star of David. The headmaster of the Caroline Jewish School said that students are told to think twice before walking into certain areas of the Danish capital if they're wearing such symbols or head coverings. Tensions in the North European nation increased during Israel's November Operation Pillar of Defense with Gaza, during which the Israeli embassy in Copenhagen was attacked. No one was injured, but the building was defaced. A Jewish boy was attacked by bullies who yelled, Heil Hitler, in Malmo, Sweden last week. Dr. Moshe Kanter, president of the European Jewish Congress, said that the increase of neo-Nazis and Muslims in the Malmo community has escalated the threats against the Jews there. He said the Jewish community is slowly being pushed out. It is dying of a thousand cuts. This most recent incident is followed by a series of rock-throwing attacks against Jews. Anti-Semitism is reportedly on the rise in Sweden, and anti-Semitic attacks have increased there as well. Jordan's Ministry of Tourism is also warning Jewish tourists against the wearing of noticeably Israeli clothing or praying in public while visiting the Hashemite Kingdom. There has been a surge in the number of ultra-Orthodox Jews who wish to visit the tombs of Moses and his brother Aaron that are located at Jordan's Mount Nebo where their prayer services have apparently agitated the predominantly Palestinian local population. Warning of the existence of a concrete threat, Israel's Counterterrorism Bureau is now issuing a travel advisory against visiting any part of the kingdom. Syrian fighter jets have bombed a mosque in a Palestinian refugee camp just outside of Damascus. Rebel forces reported that at least 25 people were killed in the blast. Violence has increased in the vicinity of the Yarmouk refugee camp, which houses around 500,000 Palestinians. This comes just after the United States and NATO forces confirmed the Assad regime's use of Scud missiles against opposition forces. More than 40,000 people have been killed in the Syrian civil war. A Jordanian Salafist leader has called for the destruction of Tel Aviv. While speaking at the funeral of a suicide bomber in Amman, Abed Shahadde said that Israel's prime minister should be informed that the army of the prophet is coming his way, adding that as far as his group is concerned, Palestine stretches from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea and that they will not rest until it has been liberated. Shahadde then accused the United States of being the mother of all terror in the world. 
and of supporting the Jews and Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Palestinian Media Watch has reported that the Fatah party has released a new logo ahead of the 45th anniversary of its founding. The logo, which was first published in a Palestinian newspaper, shows a rifle and a keffiyeh, or Arab headdress, covering all of the land of Israel. The picture, which spans from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, completely eliminates the Jewish state. The United Nations is hosting a Palestinian art exhibit near the entrance of its New York City headquarters. Entitled, One Arab State Solution, the display depicts all of Israel as a Palestinian state. Just weeks ago, on November 29, the United Nations General Assembly voted in favor of accepting the Palestinian Authority as a non-member observer state. And now the organization is hosting the exhibit that features the names of terror organizations printed in the shape of the State of Israel. Pope Benedict XVI greeted PA leader Mahmoud Abbas in Vatican City last week. The Vatican, which supports a two-state solution, praised the United Nations for accepting the PA as a non-member state. Abbas thanked the pontiff for his support in the UN bid. The Pope told Abbas that he hoped that the de facto recognition would encourage the international community to resolve the conflict over Israel. A 17-year-old Palestinian was shot and killed in Hebron last week after attacking an Israeli border guard and holding a gun to his head. A nearby female guard witnessed the assault and fired her weapon three times, killing the assailant. The border guard was unharmed. Surveillance video footage of the incident has been released, and an initial investigation determined that the Palestinian's weapon was a metal replica of a gun. Riots were then staged throughout Judea and Samaria by Palestinian residents following the death. The IDF stood in support of the officer and praised her for her bravery and for maintaining her composure under the dangerous circumstances. Palestinian groups, though, have exposed her name publicly and posted it on the Internet. Since that time, she's been the victim of repeated death threats entered on her personal Facebook account. A prominent jihadi leader has called on Christians to convert or die. In an address on Egyptian TV, Ahmed al-Baghdadi al-Hassani called Christians polytheist and warned that they must choose Islam or death. He said that the daughters and wives of Christians who refused to convert would be taken and regarded as the wives of Muslims. His comments portray the growing anti-Christian sentiment in Muslim countries. Earlier this month, a group of Egyptian Christian voters were banned from voting in the recent Egyptian election. Christians in South Africa have joined together with the Jewish leaders of their community to call on their government to refrain from taking partisan action against Israel. The groups convened during the 53rd Annual African National Congress Conference. Seven Christian leaders and the chief rabbi of South Africa published a letter on the front page of Africa's Sunday Times asking that the ANC not endorse a divisive motion of conflict, but instead work to promote peaceful negotiations. It also said that Pretoria has no just cause for choosing sides and should support both Israel and the Palestinians in their struggle for a peaceful solution. It went on to caution that South Africa's ruling party could lose its credibility as a voice for peace if it was to back one side over the other and heighten an agenda of conflict, possibly impeding a solution that enables Jews to live in their ancient biblical land in peace side by side with their Muslim neighbors. Last week, the Israeli Defense Forces named its top guns of 2012. The IDF Honorary Awards Ceremony recognized the most outstanding IDF units and awarded the Israeli Air Force's Nachshon Intelligence Squadron, the Navy's Battleship Squadron, and the Galilee Division for their outstanding service. IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Benny Gantz recognized the groups who won first place in the categories of Battalion, Brigade, and Division. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here on a beautiful day in Jerusalem on our rooftop studio. My guest today is Nitzan Chen, director of the Government Press Office. Nitan, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me to your nice show. Nitan, tell us a little bit about what is the government press office? 
Well, the government press office is actually a, is a PR for the state of Israel. We are uh, combining a public relation to the state of Israel, the government of Israel, to try to help the foreign media who are coming to Israel to cover the conflict and the region and basically the uh, government activities in a positive way and not in negative uh, attitude. Why do you think there's so much negative publicity for Israel, the only free and democratic state in the Middle East? Well, this is a really quite heavy question, but uh, I will try to answer your question. First of all, what can we say? We, at the moment, the Israeli uh, Hasbara needs to be improved. I think we already improved uh, so far a little bit. We need to improve more in order to show that we are the right in this uh, conflict. On, on top of on that, we need to uh, uh, improve our facilities and to show them that we are right only just only only not only because of the conflict of the uh, region but also uh, we are right in terms of the huge uh, conflict in terms of uh, religions in terms of uh, the conflict between jews muslims and christians etc etc but there is lots of reason about it. It could be also anti-Semitism. It could be also because they are more uh, keen about the Arabic uh, countries and we are a small, tiny country, as you probably know. But there is also another reason. And for me, the small amount of reason, which is quite heavy, that we are not really put some budget, some uh, efforts in terms of the Asbara to show them that we are right in this conflict. If we su will succeed to change this, uh, this, the last reason that I mentioned to you, I think that the sky is the limit and we can do a lot of activities in order that we will uh, win in terms of the PR uh, battle. Well, we just saw recently in the last few weeks with the conflict in Gaza that the government press office and the Ministry of Public Diplomacy scored a huge victory in the debate. I mean, most people understood that it was terrorists from Gaza shooting rockets at uh, Israeli civilian populations. How can we use that success and build more success from that? You're right. You see, first of all, we were lucky in the last uh, conflict. We were worked in a cooperation, all the Hasbara uh, organization worked together at the same with the Minister of Hasbara, Yuli Edelstein, but also we were lucky because God helped us. And you know, the, the IDF uh, uh, activities was really specific only on those terrorists. They wouldn't attack the children and women, and it will help us also in order to uh, uh, convince them that we were right. But you know what, Josh? I believe that Israeli uh, strong attitude of Asbara uh, will help us also to uh, explain the entire world that we were right, not only in the conflict in terms of when we have operation in Gaza, but also in, in during uh, the ordinary days, you know, to, to explain them that Israel is only a small Jewish country. And we believe in that. And we are, when we collect the foreign media in our office, we will try to help them, first of all, to find a nice flat in Jerusalem or in Tel Aviv, second, to help them in all other social activities. And only on top of that, we will help them in terms of briefing about the conflict and uh, tell them to contact with other uh, official Israeli government. All these things together make the GPO a relevant organization in order that uh, the foreign media were coming to Israel. You know, we've got here almost 3,000 of uh, foreign media correspondents. All, all different new media and internet and print and uh, and newspapers it's a lot we can build them we can uh, make them more close to the Israeli uh, narrative and to the Israeli uh, vision and with God help we can uh, win you know that's an interesting point that you bring up there are 3,000 media outlets here in Israel a state the size of El Salvador why do you think there's so much media interest in what happens in Israel? Well, because first of all, we are the only democracy country in the Middle East. I will give you an example for today. The bureau chief of the BBC is coming here. I, will go, I would like to complain, complain about one correspondent in the, in the last uh, Gaza operation that he's showing his Twitter, a, a two years uh, child, that he was actually so, uh, he was uh, uh, died in Syria, but he's showing in this Twitter that he was that this child was uh, uh, died from the IDF uh, paratroops. So we have uh, we have this debate today, and you know what? BBC, for instance, the, the, there's got a huge office here in in, uh, in in Israel. Why? Because this uh, office is entitled the Middle East. Uh, 
uh, in uh, BBC activities, but he would prefer to be here, not in Syria, not in Lebanon, not in Jordan, not even in Egypt, only in Israel. Ask yourself why. I think that the reason is that here he's got a freedom speech, freedom uh, journalism, freedom uh, communication, and if we go to other Arab countries, the government will either show them no, 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 or they can even arrest him. Therefore, I think they are a bit hypocritical in terms of the attitude because here is the only country in the Middle East that the, 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 the journalism is really free and you can do whatever you like. You can criticize the government, you can criticize Nitzan Khan and all other uh, officials, uh, people, and nobody, no, nothing will happen to them, which is good that it's like this. I'm not criticizing this, but you know, they are, they are a bit exaggerated in order to, uh, they need to be objective in terms, in terms of the conflict and not to be, uh, not to represent only the Arabic side. This is my opinion. Absolutely. Nitsan, there are literally tens of millions of people watching the show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? To be a, show, a small ambassador for the Israel uh, society, to love us, to help us in terms of the Asbara, and if we need any uh, uh, see you or any help uh, in terms of communication, in terms of... Each one of you in, in, in your short, modest field, you know, at your work, or sometimes you've got a debate during uh, your way to your bank, etc., etc., to talk positive about Israel and not negative. To talk negative about Israel, we've got plenty, but to talk positive and to help us, I think it's, 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 it's a really good initiative, and if you can do that, God bless you. Thank you, Nitsan, for being on the show, and thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, Shining Light from Israel. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened in Israel. Come explore Jerusalem where Jesus opened blind eyes. Visit the hills of Galilee where Jesus fed the multitude. Stroll through Capernaum where Jesus lived and taught and healed. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. Nothing is more frightening to a parent than the thought of their newborn baby dying unexpectedly in their sleep. Sudden infant death syndrome, commonly referred to as SIDS, is defined as the sudden death of an infant younger than a year that remains unexplained after thorough investigation including a complete autopsy. Israeli inventor Chaim Starovid was working on a cost-effective breathing monitor for post-surgery patients when he became aware of SIDS and began to develop baby sense. Even though worldwide sudden death infant rates have decreased over the past 10 years, with better preventative education given to new parents, SIDS unfortunately still remains the leading cause of death among infants between the ages of 1 to 12 months. The first successful product developed for preventing SIDS is the baby breathing monitor, BabySense. BabySense is a highly sensitive non-touch baby breathing monitor. It is intended for the detection of respiratory cessation in babies. The control unit is connected to sensor pads which are placed between the infant's mattress and crib base. If for whatever reason no breathing is detected within 20 seconds or if the breath rate slows to 10 breaths per minute, an audible alarm will sound, giving critical time to intervene. Shirley Bachar Peled, mother of three children under age four, has used baby sense throughout each of their first year. I started using baby sense because I heard about um, crib death and I was very scared about it. You have no control over it, and, and if you can prevent it in any way, this is the first thing I will do. Baby Sense helped me uh, sleep um, better at night. I feel that my kids are safe, and uh, that I know that if something happens, I can hear and, and take care of them right away. Today, Baby Sense is sold in 35 countries worldwide for both home as well as hospital use in certain countries. 
A recent clinical trial performed by Rambam Hospital in Israel using baby sense monitors concluded, under the mattress movement sensing is accurate in alarming for apnea and baby cardia in infants. Baby sense is medically approved in Israel, Europe, Japan and Australia. Orit and Avi Elbert, who are the proud parents of two sets of twins, are forever grateful to BabySense for saving their oldest daughter Osher's life. Osher was one month old when the BabySense alarm notified her parents that she had stopped breathing. We ran to see what happened. We found her in a situation, in a very scary situation. Uh, she was almost uh, not breathing at all. Uh, her eyes were uh, scrolled. And uh, just little by little, after like uh, one minute uh, or even more, she uh, started to breathe again. Osher was rushed to hospital, and after much testing, they discovered she was allergic to milk and suffered from severe reflux, which had probably caused her to choke. Whether it's saving infant lives or helping mom and dad get a peaceful night's rest, baby sense makes a whole lot of sense. This is Ayelet Saban for Israel Up Close. More than one million Jewish children have been killed by abortion in Israel since 1948. Israel is currently engaged in a demographic war for its very survival as a Jewish state. Imagine what a difference one million more Jews would have made for Israel. Friends of Efrat saves the lives of thousands of children every year by providing support to pregnant women in distress. Since 1977, Efrat has saved over 30,000 lives and is recognized as a world leader in preventing abortions. You can play a major role in Israel's survival now by helping us save Israel's unborn children. Please stay tuned for the ICEJ report from the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem. Welcome to this new edition of the ICJ Report. We are just approaching the Christmas holidays and Christmas is always a very exciting celebration in particular here in Jerusalem. As just a few miles from here in the hills of Bethlehem, Jesus Christ, the savior of the world was born and he changed our lives. Yuha, isn't Christmas an amazing celebration every year in particular here in Jerusalem? It is in many ways. You know, in, in what happens in the public in the nations but then again Jürgen for me personally Christmas is such a great time because I received my greatest gift ever in Christmas well tell us about that you, <laughs> no, you ask me <laughs> you, you know my salvation wow. you know I got saved in Christmas hmm. and uh, if you remember in the Bible it talks about Jesus becoming man yes and through him becoming man salvation is available for us. That's an amazing concept to think that God would become man, isn't it? It shows that he loves us. Yes. It shows that he can approach us from the level of our hearts. Amen. Wherever our hearts are, Jesus can enter in and change it. And there's nothing which we experience which he wouldn't have experienced. Correct, he was a true man. Yeah. Now the Bible says that the word in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, meaning fully human, fully God. God, man, Jesus. But uh, what, are the, what is the greatest Christmas gift what you ever received, you huh? For me, it's the gift of eternal life. And uh, I received the gift of eternal life during Christmas. For me, Christmas time is special. It's for, for the reason that Jesus was born during Christmas, but also because I was born again during Christmas. When I was 20 years old, I was in Spain, Toro Molinos, Malaga, and there I met with Jesus personally, and he gave me the eternal gift of uh, salvation, the eternal life during Christmas. 
That was my Christmas present, Jürgen. I was, uh, that was Christmas time when Jesus saved me. And I don't believe there's any bigger Christmas gift what you could receive than eternal life. No, and uh, you know, during Christmas we are really meditating on this gift. And the truth in the Bible is that, that Jesus became man. God became flesh. The Bible says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And because Jesus became a human being, He is true God, true man, God-man Jesus. And because He became a man and he, and he walked among us, dwelt among us, died on the cross, and He was resurrected from the dead, and that is the reason why we can receive the gift of salvation into our own personal lives. Jürgen, I'm talking to you now and, and we have a relationship, we are friends, but I have a relationship with Jesus. Well, thank you so much, Juha, for this very inspiring message. And this is indeed what all Christmas is about, that God became man and He knows exactly what we are going through. And I want to challenge every listener today as you are watching this program. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, as Juha just explained it right now, I want to plead with you today to seek Jesus at this Christmas celebration and to make Him your personal Lord. It will change change your life. And I also want to challenge you that you use this Christmas celebration to put a very special and a generous gift into the ministry of the International Christian Embassy. It is the Jewish people which blessed us so greatly with so many spiritual blessings that the Messiah came from them, the Word of God came from them. And Paul tells us in Romans chapter 15 that it's very natural for us to bless them back with our material gifts. The Christian Embassy is here during the year, throughout the year, to bless the Jewish people in many areas of their society. We are standing with the nation of Israel to show them that we have been blessed by their Messiah and we want to bless them back in thankfulness and to make a measurable difference here in this land of Israel. Remember, we are your embassy here in Jerusalem and I wish you a very Merry Christmas blessing here from the city of the Great King. May the Lord bless you. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan el -Rohm. And I'm Erin Viner, reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us again next week for all your Israel updates.